Today, we're gonna to take this room-based Cisco video endpoint that I have behind me here, and we are gonna turn it into the most universal video endpoint out there. And the way we are gonna do that is we're gonna take the cameras inside of this speaker bar here with speaker track, with all the great features that Cisco came out with, along with the microphones, and we are gonna make them USB devices. So you can walk in the room here with your laptop, plop it down on the table, plug in, with one cable here, and your laptop is just gonna see the camera and the microphones as USB devices. So that way it'll work with whatever software you have on your laptop that you're trying to use. Amazon Chime, Microsoft Teams, whatever you wanna use, it's just gonna look like USB devices. So that's what we're gonna go over today. And if you guys are new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and if you like today's content, give it a thumbs up. So I'm gonna break this down into three different parts. First, we're gonna show off the end user experience, what it looks like when I come in the room, put my laptop down and actually do plug in. Then we're gonna talk about the hardware necessary to get this done. There is a little box from InnoGenie that you're gonna to have to purchase to do it. And then we're gonna talk about how to program this into the codec in order to make it happen. It's all super, super easy, and I'm gonna take you guys through every step of the way to show you guys how to get it done. If you need help or you're curious on where to go for the stuff that we're gonna talk about today, go ahead and take a look in the description of this video. There's going to be a link, and that link is gonna take you to a WebEx chat room. I'm gonna be in that WebEx chat room. There's a bunch of technical marketing engineers from Cisco that are in that chat room as well. Uh, this solution is community supported, so there's a bunch of people in that room that want to make this successful for you, and they're gonna help you out every step of the way. So if you do have questions, or you're wondering where do I get the macro that we're gonna talk about in a little bit, click on that link in the description. All that information is going to be in there in that chat room. So with that, let's go in and let's take a look at what the end user experience is actually gonna be. All right, so I walk in my room, I've got my laptop with me, and first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and plug in just like I normally would if I bring my laptop in the room. And we plug in. And at first, again, nothing new here. My monitor, my laptop is gonna get mirrored over to the primary monitor. And if I have a secondary monitor, it's also gonna show up on there. Now the new thing is in order to enable this USB mode, there's a new button that you're gonna get on your touch panel. And it's called simply enable USB mode. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna press that. Now, a couple things happen when we run that button or macro, you may hear it called as well. The first thing is your secondary monitor, if you have one, is now gonna show a self view of the main camera in the room. If you don't have a secondary monitor, you probably won't see anything when you press that button. But the reason that we're doing that, the reason we're putting the self view on the secondary monitor here is because that's where we're actually doing the capture and we're sending that video stream as the USB peripheral to your laptop. And we'll go into a little more detail and we'll show the hardware setup in a second here, but that's how it's working and that's how we're, we're capturing it. The other thing you're gonna notice here is the microphones actually go hot. So I've got a microphone right here. You can see the green light on it, showing that it's enabled. The really nice thing about this too is, is we preserve the mute and unmute function. So if I press it, that light actually goes red. So it's a little bit of extra safety and security in there. So the thing, hey, are we actually on mute? Well, the light's on red, so yes, we are on mute. Just be careful with that because you can easily double mute if you mute yourself on your software that you're running on your laptop and you mute yourself with the mics here, again, you might double mute yourself. So just watch out for that one. Then if I go ahead and I go on my laptop here, you can see that I'm just about to join a Microsoft Teams meeting. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the join button. First thing that pops up, we're gonna set some of our settings right here. So I wanna enable video and you can see it already actually sensed the camera that's over here, but I can go in here and I can manipulate that a little bit. So under video settings, camera, and then here is the Innogeni 4KX Plus camera. That's the capture card that we're using to capture this information from the camera to the computer. So make sure that that is set. The other thing that you wanna make sure you set is your microphones. Again, it's coming from the same box, so we need to make sure that that, that actually gets set. Once you do that, you can go ahead and click join meeting. 
and you're in. And right here, I've got my little friend, the bird, and he's on a Microsoft Teams meeting with us. And it's as simple as that. Again, if you have two screens set up right here, what you're gonna actually see is the remote participant there and a full screen of self view. If you just have a single screen, again, you'll see the remote participants on the main monitor and your self view is just gonna be whatever Microsoft Teams wants to show you in the bottom corner there. So that's it, let's head over and let's show you guys how the hardware uh, looks and how to get this stuff set up. All right, so how are we making this work from a hardware perspective? And the first thing that you're gonna need is this box right here. This is a box from InnoGenie, it's called the 4KX Plus. Take a look at the description of the video. I'm gonna show you guys where you can pick these things up. But this is what's actually doing the magic. This is what's converting the HDMI from the camera and the audio from the microphones and making them USB devices. So let's take a look at how this is set up here. Number one, I've got my primary and secondary monitor outputs on my codec right here. Again, what we wanna use is the secondary monitor output. That's this cable right here with the gray. That's gonna go to the input on the InnoGenie device. That's gonna give me my camera that's gonna get converted in a second here. And then the other one we need to worry about with this box is the audio output. You're gonna to wanna to plug a regular stereo cable into the, from there, and that goes right into there. It's a three and a half millimeter stereo head, headphone jack that's gonna get plugged right into the input on there. Then what this box does is, it's got the USB output, and then that goes right to where the laptop would plug in. And I've got a little dongle here, which helps me combine the USB functionality. This is gonna be for the cameras and the microphone. And then this, this is the, the regular HDMI cable that's coming in from the back of the codec. So that's your normal PC input. It's going into here, I'm just combining them here with this dongle, and I tape the wires together to, to make it look a little bit, a little bit neater. If you have a single room or a single screen system, you are done at this point. If you have a dual screen system, you've got a couple different options. Option one is to use this loop out feature right here. You run an HDMI cable right from that back to your secondary monitor, and that's how you get the secondary monitor to light up. Depending on where you're gonna put this, you may not wanna, we may not be able to run it like that. So what you could do is you could actually split this, and there's a, a couple solutions from Lightware that we've uh, kind of certified to work with this, but we actually can split this secondary monitor cable out before going into the InnoGenie box. Just depends on the setup and where you're gonna wanna place this box here in order to do that. But really, that's it from a hardware perspective. It's super, super simple to set up. And let's roll over to the software side and show you guys how to program that button. All right, so to get this to work, you're gonna need to get into your codec. If you're registered to Control Hub, find the codec, go to your device web portal. If you're not registered to Control Hub, just get into your codec however you normally would. Once you're in, click Settings, go to Video, and what we need to do is we need to statically set our monitors. So instead of having them set to auto here, we're gonna go ahead and say, okay, what kind of monitor setup do you have? Do you have dual monitors in the room? Do you have single monitor in the room? Pick whichever one you have. I have dual, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click dual there. Then you're gonna to scroll to the closer to the bottom here for your outputs, because these are your monitor outputs and monitor roll. Again, change it from audio from auto to for me, it's gonna be first. So that's gonna be my main one, and then my connector two there, that's going to my secondary monitor, so I'm just gonna hit second right there. Then the next thing, or the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do here is figure out which connection you have for your HDMI connection from your PC back to your codec. For me, that's connector two over here. Name it something if you want. By default, you just put PC one, uh, in there, but you can change it to whatever you would like. Make sure that the quality is set to sharpness, and then we're gonna wanna change this threshold 60 FPS to never. Once you have that all set, just go ahead and click save. Now that's gonna basically set us up and get us ready to deploy the macro. Okay, so to deploy the macro, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on macro editor right here. 
And this is gonna pop up. It's not telling us that macros are disabled. Yes, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna enable macros here. And what we're gonna do is we're not gonna go and create our own macro. We're gonna actually import. And where you find this file, you're gonna to wanna to go to that WebEx chat room that I talked about before that's in the description of the video. And this file is located inside of that room. And if it gets updated, you guys will be updated to the latest version of this. And we're gonna go ahead and say open here. And then this is gonna open it up. Now what we need to do is we need to push this to the codec. So we're gonna hit this button right here and say save to the video system. And it gets pushed down and then we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna enable this. And we enabled it and you'll get a little pop-up on the touch panel telling you that it was detected and it's enabled. And that's how you get the button on the touch panel. Now I'll point out one other thing here. And for me, I actually had to go back and then go back into my macro editor to get this memory storage macro. You're going to want to do that and make sure you have this here. Go ahead and click enable. What this does is, because we need to be changing some things inside of the codec, this memory storage right here is going to take a snapshot of the configuration before the user hits the enable USB mode. And then once they're done and they hit disable USB mode, we're gonna take all the configuration, all the settings of the codec and revert them back to just before they push that enable USB mode. All right, so there's still a couple things we need to go over. Number one, what devices is this gonna be supported for? And number two, what caveats have I found working with a solution? So the devices that this is supported with are gonna be any of the newer room kit devices that are out there. So we've got the kit, the kit plus, the kit pro, any of the devices that have that codec in there, like the room 55, room 55 dual, room 70, room 70 dual, those are all gonna work. There's also support for the SX80 and any of the room devices that have the SX80 inside of them. What it is not going to work for is the SX20. This has started to come up a lot. The SX20 is not supported. And the reason why it won't work is because we can't take the microphone inputs and loop it out on that audio output portion there. So for that reason, it doesn't work with this solution. Now, any caveats or what were the caveats that I came across working with this? And really the only one was because we're using self view to do this. Remember when I had the self view on the secondary screen, if the user goes into the touch panel and starts messing around with the self view and minimizing it or trying to turn it off, that's going to screw up what the output is on that secondary monitor. And the people on the far end are going to see that. So make sure that users don't really play around with that self view, make sure they don't turn it off, make sure they don't minimize it or do anything like that. But that was really the only caveat that I found working with a solution. Besides that, it works pretty good. Um, and again, guys, if you need help and you want support on this, check out that WebEx room that I was talking about before. It's in the description of the video. Click that, we'll be in there to answer any of your questions. And guys, I hope you like this video. Again, if you're a new person to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And if you liked today's content, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.